Hello, this is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix Guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. We're looking at some of the new features here in version 14 of Premiere Elements. And here we are in version 14. One of the most dramatic changes Adobe has made in version 14 of Premiere Elements is under the Export and Share button. This was previously called Publish and Share. But if you click on export and share and we get the export and share panel, you see it looks pretty dramatically different from the old uh, publish and share panel. This redesign in the export and share panel is much more intuitive. It's designed to be built around your workflow. In other words, you select where you want your videos to go and the program will automatically select the best specs for you. In fact, right here on the default screen, when you open export and share, you get a quick export panel. And a quick export panel, as you can see, if you look over at the settings, will output a 1280 by 720 30p video. It's an MP4. This may not work for every single situation, but if you're just trying to output a video, so you just want to look at it on your computer, you want to share it with your friends, uh, you want to post it to a website or post it to a social media site like YouTube, Vimeo, or Facebook, this is a nice generic uh, video to output. It's at a great size. Uh, it's at a great quality level. It's pretty much anything you need about 80% of the time. So if you just want to output a video and you don't want to think too much about it, quick export is a very nice uh, option for you. But if you want to get more specific, go under devices here. And under devices, you can output a video for playback on a computer on a TV. Now this is to output it to say a thumb drive. A number of TVs you can plug a thumb drive in and play video directly off of those. Those tend to be smart TVs and you can see that you can output it as even a 4K high definition or a 1280 by 720. These are all for HD TVs or 4K TVs. There are options here for outputting to a mobile device. So if you're outputting here to uh, say for instance an Android phone or a tablet or an Apple phone or a tablet. Uh, this is an ideal output. You see they're all going to come out as MP4 H.264s, but you can do them in high def and high def light, 1280 by 720. And then you've got 1280 by 800, which I have no idea what you'd <laughs> use that for. And you have a custom option here for creating your own outputs. As you see, I created a 640 by 480 MP4 for some of my standard definition video. But let's go back here to computer. This is probably the most powerful uh, output panel. And here you can see you can output uh, 4K. You can output 1920 by 1080 or 1440 by 1080 high def. Uh, you can go 1280 by 720 high def. And if you move on over here, you can, of course, output also standard definition 720 by 576. That's PAL or 720 by 480 NTSC. You'll notice that under each of these categories, there are a number of format options, including MT2, which is a high quality uh, AVCHD file, MOVs and MP4s, which be more likely to produce a file that you're going to post online. Uh, MPEG TS, these would be great if you are outputting video for a Blu-ray disc or a DVD that you're going to author in another program like DVD Architect or Encore. And you notice as we go down here to some of these uh, standard resolutions, we have options here for putting out a variety, including DVAVIs, DVMOVs. Now, the DVAVI will not be available on a Macintosh, but the DVMOV is essentially the same thing, as well as the MPEG, which we can use to output for a DVD. Under the disk option, you'll find options for outputting a DVD, a Blu-ray disk, or an AVCHD file. Notice that under each one of these categories for disk, you have the option of burning directly to a disk or burning to an ISO file, an ISO image file, which is a complete package of all the files that are used to create a DVD or a Blu-ray disk, but packaged into a single file that you can archive and then output from. Under online, you'll find options for outputting directly to Facebook, Vimeo, or YouTube. Uh, each of these will interface directly with the website through your browser and uh, you will be able to add little captions or keyword tags or whatever you'd like. There are outputs for outputting standard audio files as well as options for outputting uh, images. Now if you want to know what all these output options mean, what these different file formats mean, and uh, when to use them and why to use them and why there are so many, 
I do detail that in the book. I have an entire appendix page where I explain all of these file formats. I also have a chart that'll show you uh, how and when to use each of these file formats. Now, if you want to know more about this terrific program, be sure to check out the many tips and tutorials we have here at moviepicks.com. If you want to know virtually everything there is about every tool in the program, then be sure to check out my books, the moviepicks.com guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements together. Those are available at amazon.com and of course right here at the Movie Pick store. I'm Steve Grisetti. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again real soon.